Hello and welcome to Stargazing, the show that brings you up close and personal with your favourite stars of reggae and dancehall music. I am Sean Kane. In this edition of the show, we'll speak with a bass guitarist who's been strumming at the guitars for more than 30 years. That activity has also taken him all over the world entertaining people. Let's take a look. Owen Dreddy Reed left his native St. Mary and relocated to the Jamaican capital Kingston in the early 1980s. It was there that he met the renowned bass guitarist Aston Family Man Barrett. They discussed music and Reed expressed his interest in playing the guitar. Barrett, who was part of the late Bob Marley's band, The Wailers, invited him to Marley's home on Hope Road. That was a popular place where many Rastafarians hung out at the time. By this time, the moniker Dreddy was added to Reed's name, as he had fully embraced the Rastafarian faith. Young Owen Dreddy Reed observed his mentor, Family Man, playing the guitar before he started plucking at the strings. He continued to hone his bass guitar skills under the expert guidance of Family Man. Not long after, he was officially drafted into the band. They toured the world and played at some of the most prestigious venues. While this was happening, Marley's son, Julian, felt that it was time that he started his own music career and he wanted to launch a band to go on the road. In the mid to late 1990s, a meeting was held with the Wailers and Julian asked if Reed could be released to join his band, a request to which Reed had agreed. Reed continued his globe-trotting exploits as part of Julian Marley's team. They performed in North and South America and Europe. He had a long and productive association with Julian and the other members of the band. During this time, Reed contributed his bass guitar skills to Julian and his brother Damien's albums. Damien eventually won a Grammy Award for one of the albums, Halfway Tree. After spending more than a decade in Julian's band, Reed eventually found himself among the Wailers' flock again. He told the Stargazing with Sean Kane show that the decision to leave was an amicable one. However, he did not give details on what prompted his return to the Whalers. Welcome back. Dreddy, what go on, sir? Give thanks, blessings and love to you and the family yes. and all the people of all the land. That's brilliant. Dreddy, has playing the bass guitar always been what you wanted to do in life ever since you were a child? Always, 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 from way back in the 70s. But it even start, it, it even start before, it even start before that because I remember one Christmas like in the 60s, back then um, we used to get like toy gun as present and but the England toy gun was a favorite because there was like iron gun with paper shots and I remember my mom bought me a little guitar and I was like ah uh, guitar? And I paused for a while, but I accept it. And as time goes by, I realize that I get really more interested in the guitar. Until I even started to make guitar from um, sardine can and fish, fishing line. <laughs> so that's where it all began. That's where it all began. But... Did you do anything else before embarking on your musical career journey? Yes, well, I, before I started this music, I was a fisherman. And I was living in Elsha back then, in Kingston, Jamaica. And um, I had two accidents at sea, twice. And the first one was really bad. 
um, the boats sink with us and um, some other fishermen from Greenwich from passing by. It was like out in the open blue light for about 45 minutes or so till we get picked up and um, take to shore and I go back again and we nearly had an accident again and I said God I but the first accident I make a plea to God and repent and do everything I said if you spare me Lord I gotta do your work and he really sent rescue so the second time it happened after we reached shore I said you know what God please help me take me to the next level and I met this brother and he gave me a guitar and um, I said you know what I'm going to Bob Marley and from I went to Bob Marley place 1981 no 1980 that is where I never met him that he, he, he left for his last tour like two weeks ago two weeks before sorry two weeks before and um, I was there and he never come back alive so um, I was there under the, um, the guidance of family man Barrett which is Bob Marley bass player so he was my mentor and he said look here man we have future move to make so make sure you get your, your priorities really fast and that was 1980 mm -hmm. well being in the environs of Bob Marley although he was not there because you said at the time he was away overseas but meeting the band members meeting his family and just being in the rehearsal room and around things Bob Marley did you want to meet Bob Marley? Of course man but you know what I mean that's how life is so I just appreciate what I have and where I was on the time on the moments day by day what was your next step in terms of starting your career? I know you began hanging out at Bob Marley's residence on Hope Road in Kingston, Jamaica. What was your next steps after starting being around the guys there? Bob Marley home, which is 56 Hope Road, that was like the head, the head, the headquarters for Rasta, otherwise different from 12 Tribe. 12 tribe was just like about 12 tribe of Israel was like about 200 yard about 400 yard up the street but Bob Marley place was where all most musicians come and people Rasta and because Bob was that love and he was the man of that century so being there was a great inspiration started out um practicing family man gave me a guitar no drew marvin gave me a guitar first while family man gave me the keys said look here take care of the rehearsal room and get your stuff together and um being there ziggy and steve they were like about 12 13 back then and when they come from school they used to come for rehearsal so we used to practice and um I'm playing bass, Ziggy singing and playing his guitar, Stephen playing drums. And um, we've been rehearsing some of his songs that he would be using for his first album. So being there, we've been practicing, practicing until studio time come. Um, Family Man wasn't there as the bass player, so I have to be, I have to sit in for him on the session. For the first album, which is Play the Game Right. That was the original title. And um, so Family Man wasn't there, so it was me, Carlton Barrett, Juna Marvin, Waya Lindo, and Tyrone Downey. We did the album, and after Family Man come and he started to redo because he's a man, so he started to do his correction. Till one of the songs, Ziggy, Ziggy said, no fans, leave that song, leave that song, 
which is aiding and abetting. And that was my first official recording. I get what? $250 back then in the 80s. That was my first official recording. But well, that was a lot of money back then. Wasn't yes, it? back in the 80s, $250, that was a nice little change. Dreddy, how confident were you at the time playing the bass guitar, considering that essentially you were an intuitive player? When under the guidance of Family Man, I get quite a few work in before running up to that because like hours and nights on top of nights worth of um practicing because i have to play the records and practice the lines then sometimes he he, he, he passed through and give me some pointer said this is a major skill a minor skill this is that and that so I was very confident after well not really very very confident but i was ready to do it when did you become an official member of the band that up in 1987 no 86 uh, my dad passed my dad passed away 86 and they have a, a debut concert. Um, I don't quite remember which day it was, but it, it, it was on the same day that my dad supposed to bury. So I was way I was weighing the option. I said, God, today's my dad's funeral, and today's the debut um, appearance for the whalers coming back together with the eye trees after Bob passed away so I said dad and I said to myself I know my dad would say go ahead because while I was rehearsing before he passed away man to remember all them stuff because I don't read music so I have to rely and remember everything and I remember one night my dad come to me in Oak Road and he said this is how you have to do the thing and he was splitting a iron with an axe. <laughs> so I said, well, all right. I know he would want me to do this performance. So after we did that debut performance, that's my first introduction to the world with the Whalers in 56 Oak Road. They did that debut concert. And then after that, Family Man said, well, we have future move to make. Then um, 87, we started to started um touring like um america um canada um new zealand and england it was rather interesting hearing about that dream very much so but you had eventually mastered your craft and you started working with Julian Marley, who was one of Bob Marley's children. What prompted that move for you to leave the Whalers and join Julian's band? All right, so while we started out 87 with the Whalers and um, touring, Af Julian come to Jamaica when he was a small kid 1981 to the funeral and he was there and he didn't he hang around for a while between Treadstone and other places and I think he went back to England and then he come back to Jamaica and then he said he want to sing with the whalers and um, he didn't ready at the time so he said Dred if I could just get if I can't sing with the whalers if I could just get Wirelinder and Family Man Barrett and we just stop our band then. And Fam said, no, Dreddy, because this is the Whalers. This is my, my group, which I started. So you start with Julian. You take care of him and build that. We was on the road and Julian called me and said, come, I'm ready now. And Fam said, all right, go ahead. So... That's how I started out with Julian. But bit, 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 um, while I was doing that, we was doing recording. 
Um, and quite a few of Julian stuff also. After 1983, we started out and he started to put his, his, his rec album together, which is Lion in the Morning, the first album. And then um, family, we, we, we put a band together with like Rupert Ben, um, Rupert Ben from who used to play with Shaggy, and Bird who used to play drummer, um, who used to play drum. He was a drummer for Light Parks, We the People. Yeah, we Yeah, and um, Andrew McIntyre, John Bent, and um, another sister. I don't quite remember her name. And Ari T. Um, he used to play percussion for bon, um, Bunny Whalers. So we, uh, the first tour was Japan. And then we started to do um, South America, Brazil, Chile. And um, this looked like for a while, Julian was like the man of the hour for so um, South America. Dreddy, let's do a bit of reflecting now on a major aspect of your journey. After you became a part of Julian Marley's band, you started touring with Julian, as you mentioned. What would you consider to be some of the highlights of that time in your musical career? Well, the highlight, we have some really good highlight moments. But I remember one of the, the best or the most memorable highlight was we did this concert in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And that was the biggest venue. Um, I, I don't quite remember the name of that venue. But we sold out that venue like three nights in a row. And I remember Diana Ross was there. And she come to one of the concerts. Did she come over she, to say how she received that She performance? dealt with Julian while we was busy doing other stuff. Like meeting the fans and all that. And there's another highlighted moment. I remember we have a plane incident. We was leaving from one um, city to the other city and we take off and we have to return back. Everybody was so devastated at the aircraft because it's like they actually think this is it. The plane have to return and land. I'm terribly sorry to hear that. How long did it take to get over that scare? Was it days, weeks, months, years, if at all? No, well, I know that um, this is life. And it was kind of horrifying, but I wasn't panicking. I was just asking, say, God, please, Father, please care for us because you see we have things to do. While other people was panicking and all that. So I just put my trust in God and knew that everything would be all right. But while you were playing bass guitar in Julian Marley's band, you also did some work for Damien Marley. That's Julian's older brother. Now, I just want to find out a little bit, because I know that Damien is a Grammy award-winning artist. So, did you ever contribute to any of his Grammy award-winning works? I didn't produce none of the Grammy record, I, but I perform, I play bass. Mm. And I'm um, like, Damien first set the album, come all the way down to... Um, Down to Welcome to Jamra. That was the last album I played for, for Ju, um, Damien. Yeah, from Afri, from his first record to come down to um, Welcome to Jamra. I played three songs and Jamra. Um, the Jamra, the Welcome to Jamra song. We was rehearsing that song for quite a while before we even record that song. And then when it's time to come to rehearse, I mean, to record the song. He said, you know what, Dread? I'm gonna get the original people, at least who make it, which is Sly and Robbie. So he gets Sly and Robbie, and then Sly did the drum, and Robbie played the bass. And then, but I did like, um, Road to Zion, and some, I'm um, We Gonna Make It, and, um, there for you. 
and um, the Welcome to Jamrock album. So um, I did some of the, but I didn't get a full product a producer's credit because I really didn't produce, um, present myself as a producer, just a musician. Dreddy, as a musician, it's not difficult to get into production because, of course, you'd have known your chords and your notes, your instruments, all these different things. You will also have an idea of when a song is good due to your experience. What made you decide to go into music production? Is that a natural progression from being a band member? Do you just naturally move into producing music? Well, you know, I have the option to start like in the 80s. Damien told me that Dread, I want you to start do some production with you and Noel. Noel is Noel Davy. He make this link thing ready. Because Noel used to play keyboard for us. Because um, I started, I put together a band with Noel and myself and Con. Who use who, who play for um who is playing for Bujo now? Um, he play guitar for the Abyssinian. We started that band for the Abyssinian. So I said, Ahali is no, he looks like my brethren. He's still my brethren. So anywhere I go, so I bring him up to Damien, and that's when we started with Julian from back then. And um, Damien after Ju after Julian go back to England. All the band was there. Damien come and said, "Well, look, let's let's go on the road and start make some music." Because while we were there, we was making the record with Steve producing the records, and um, so I between Steve and us, we put things together, and he put Damien album together, Julian album together, and then um, back then Damien did wanted me to start some production but it didn't work out because I didn't it was up to me I didn't uh, for somehow um, I didn't take it up fully but I started to my to do my own production now and that was like from about some seven years ago so I started to self talk the comp talk myself the computer Pro Tool. I started out with Cubase and um, nights and nights was a figure you know this and that and all the words till I started to produce my own stuff now and um, I started to send one of few tracks to, the, to, to Jamaica to get them done um, they get the vocals to my cousin which is his name is Sean Edwards too, but he's, he's going and he's, he's kind of singing in the name of Clever Roots, Sing J. So him, we have, he gets um, like artists like Pinchers and Determine and um, Ras Aishos and um, a few more people. So I have all those tracks to complete right now. So I have quite a few things to do. And here comes Sean with this brethren spoken words. So that's where it's at today. Well, that's wise words, yeah, by yeah, the wise way. Word. He's the poet that did that song for us. Well, this just attests to your production capabilities. And um, you did that for our brand new record label, Star Status International Records. The song hasn't been released yet. We're just waiting for the right time to do it. We're waiting for lockdown, all of that to be lifted and freedom to finally come to us. And when the time is right, then we'll just put that out there. Definitely, we're happy for your creativity and your um, expertise that you've brought to the whole process. We all liked it here at Star Status International Records. Now, let's move a little bit now to the family side of things. How supportive is your family of your music? Did your mother and your father get to hear anything that you played or even attend one of your concerts? No, no, no. My mom passed away um, January and my dad passed away like, um, as I, I said earlier on, like 86. 
So they didn't get to hear, but they know. My mom know um, what I'm doing and people have been telling her. Of course, I'm really sorry to hear about your mother's passing. My condolences. And I grew up around your mother. She was a very mm. lovely, very kind lady, a very community lady. And we all will miss her very dearly. I hope you take some strength from that. The fact that she was so highly regarded in the community. Yes. I know you are a father yourself now. How do your children react to your music? Oh man, they're so supportive and they're so happy and excited about the things that I'm doing right now because my, my, my son is supposed to play drum for Damien back then. Yeah, because um, I used to take him to Oak Road and um, Damien, but he was just going to high school. He would be um, working for Damien, but it didn't work out because Damien moved on. And I, when Julian um, come back to Jamaica and said, well, I want my man musician Damien. Damien said, Dre, what are you going to do? You going to stay with me or what? What are you going to do? As I said, man, I started out with Julian. So, um... I can't do him like that. And him say, all right, help me get some musician then. So that's how I help him look around for um, some people till I have to move on with um, Damien, with Julian. So my family and my children, they were very excited and appreciated. Now you are back with the Whalers. You, of course, started out with them. Then you moved over to Julian Marley's band. And then you spent some time with... Damien Marley. No, 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 no. We did quite a few things with Damien because they was after we started out with Julian, then Damien Julian find Damien and then he bring Damien in and Damien used to open for him while he used to go to South America. And then after Julian went back to England and we did the record with Damien, his first record, and then we started to tour with Damien. And then when Julian come back, we started to tour together with Julian and Damien. We did a tour, a Lollapalooza tour with Snoop Dogg and some other more artists in America. And then we did a Get A You tour with Damien and Julian and some because Steve, Steve put another group together like a, a rap group with Damien, Julian, Steve and um, Daddy Gun and True Stick. True Stick passed away. Daddy Gun passed away. And then after that, we did a tour. We opened for Ziggy. And then we go back to Julian. And we've been doing quite a few things all the way up to 2016. Um, from, um, family Man, he get, he get sick. You have some health issues. I remember attending the last show of the Whalers here in the UK. I think that was at the O2 Arena in Greenwich in London. And I met with um, Family Man. We chatted for a little while and he was not in the best of shape, I must admit. But we will continue to pray for Aston Family Man Barrett, one of the pioneering members of the Whalers band. So that's where... I move on to back to the whalers. Julian was upset, but I didn't have to make that choice because family man, the great, that's a great family man. He was my mentor and he said, look here, come sit in for me. So I have to move on with him and his son, Aston, um, Aston Bart Jr. I was his mentor in his earlier days too. So that's where we are today. But only recently, we got the tragic news of the passing of Bobby Digital. Of course, Bobby did so much for reggae and dancehall music. Most of the artists of the 80s and 90s and into the noughties, if we may call it that, they would have worked with Bobby. He was really, really good at what he did. Now that reggae has lost Bobby, how much of an impact do you think that that will have on the industry? Well, that's a loss. That's a loss to the music industry. So, 
the youngster have to pick it up from there and they're doing a good job only thing is the hardcore dance hall and the lyrics them are so dangerous to the young people these days and it's kind of sad but um everything is happening good things and bad things because ju um, just last week friday we released our first single from since the whalers come back together it's called one world so hopefully it have a kind of reggaeton mixture a kind of latin flavor also with the reggae and it includes shaggy um and skip marley and sidella marley does that sort of latin flavor indicate where the whalers might be heading next so the next kind of a recording that we hear from them should we expect to hear that latin tinge in it no just something different just a little flavor to the difference well dreddy it was really great chatting with you and uh, learning so much about your life and your journey as a musician well this has taken us to the point where we like to find out from our guests i'd just like to challenge them to see how much they know about reggae and dance or music it's your turn to be challenged now sir <laughs> i know you'll be all right with all of this <laughs> now i generally take questions from my book here reggae larger than life the ultimate reggae music fun and games book now this book is currently available on amazon if you are more of an app person the android version of the app is currently available you can download that from the google play store all you need to do is type in reggae larger than life fun app download it and you just have lots of fun with your family with your friends and just learn about reggae reminisce about reggae and dancehall music the apple version is currently being worked on as soon as that's available the announcement will be made ready it's your turn sir ready all right ready okay so uh the first question for you dreddy we've selected two questions for you and the very very first one is here now so let's go born in nine miles in the jamaican parish of saint anne in 1945 this buffalo soldier reggae superstar was given a lifetime achievement grammy award posthumously in the united states in february 2001 who was it the options are Peter Tosh, Bob That's Marley, Denny Roy Wilson, the King, and Dennis Rastafari, Rastafari. Right. Bob Marley! <laughs> Very fired up there. I can hear the excitement in your voice. <laughs> All right, the second one. You're not out of the woods yet. <laughs> the second one now. Let's see. More challenge coming for you, Jenny. Let's go. With which of the following record labels would you most associate the late legendary Jamaican record producer, Clement Sir Coxon Dodd. The options are Beverly's, Down Sound, Studio One, and Taxi. The great Studio One. That is it, sir. It is the Studio One man, the original man from Studio One. <laughs> Dreddy, we just want to thank you so much for being a part of the show. Peace be with you, brother. Definitely indeed. And the questions, the two questions you had there, they came from my book, Reggae Larger Than Life, The Ultimate Reggae Music Fun and Games Book. Of course, this book, it was written by myself and it's currently available on Amazon. Just type in Reggae Larger Than Life and it will be there. If you want to type in Sean Kane, anyone will take you there and you can purchase it. Or if you're more of an app person, the Android version of the app is currently available from the Google Play Store. Just type in Reggae Larger Than Life Fun App and you can download it and just have lots of fun. As we say, it's a fun app. <laughs> now, if you are more of an Apple person, that version of the app is currently being created and as soon as it's available, we'll make the announcement. So just keep on following and watching the space. Thank you so much. So thanks so much to Dreddy Reed and also thanks to you too for watching and being a part of the show. Remember to subscribe, like, and also comment on how we're doing. Also, remember to share this with all the people that you know so that everybody can come to our channel, the Stargazing with Sean K YouTube channel, and they can check out the other videos that we've had, the chats with other artists, so that they can get up close and personal with those artists. Until next time though, 
It's Sean Kane saying goodbye and see you soon.